We don't anticipate any problems with Charles Barkley. We think we know who he is as a person. Lionel says, we better go get us a Charles Barkley. Well, Lionel, we got Charles Barkley. I am a member of the Phoenix Suns, and I, I am happy. I think for me, a change was needed. He needed a new, a new situation, and he got it, and he's going where he wanted to go. This is by his choice. He wanted Phoenix. I think uh, this is a great opportunity for me. I want to thank Mr. Colangelo, Kaiden, Coach Westfall. I've got to get used to saying that. He gave that team and this city and the state exactly what, you know, is a, exactly a perfect fit for, for the time. And this year, you've had a season, I guess you would say, that if you were looking for what an MVP season is, your season this year is a role model for an MVP season. The night he is gonna win the MVP, okay, we go to my bar. It was confirmed that Charles is gonna win the MVP. So I got on the mic, I stand on the bar, get the mic, and I announce that Charles uh, Barkley, before anybody even knows it, has just won the MVP of the league. And the place goes nuts, and we do a little spotlight on Charles, and the drinks all around. Just one of those you know, iconic nights that a kid from Traverse City, Michigan, now he's standing on his own bar uh, announcing uh, his teammate, who's the, the MVP of the whole NBA. It's pretty cool when you think about it. But from day one here, they embraced me. They treated me great. Uh, one of the reasons I still live here today is because the fans were fantastic to me. Up to Miguel Knight. Fast break, Suns. The Barkley. Right up the score. Nice execution off the break by the Suns. Barkley was a dominant player. Uh, extremely dominant in, in the post area. He was one of the best and most talented players that's ever played the game of basketball in this history. Charles had this you know, magnetism about him, and uh, he was very confident. Who wouldn't want to play with a guy like Charles? He wasn't going to lose. I mean, he would take everybody on his back and say, I'm going to get you the promised land. Barkley is Barkley. I don't think he's 6'3". He was just one of those rare players that size didn't matter. It was just determination. Rebound, Barkley. He battles, he shoots, he scores. Sir Charles. I mean, he would take on Goliath. I mean, he was just, had that bravado about him. So Charles, uh, he, he was unbelievable what he accomplished for his size. Charles Barkley is probably one of the greatest power forwards of all time, for sure, uh, because of his skill set. Uh, he was still able to dominate inside the paint. His rebounding is, is second to none. I mean, this guy was just a beast on the boards. To be only 6'7 or so and be able to snag 20 rebounds, and you know, on a nightly basis seemed like it was incredible. Charles was, was a different kind of competitor. He wanted to destroy you. I mean, he was, he was a fun guy and he was super off the floor, a great guy to be around, but such a competitor on the floor and, and there was nothing that he couldn't do on the basketball court. Here's the lob for Barkley, goes up and jams! Oh, beautiful alley-oop for Sir Charles! He could get on a roll when the team's down and he can create a 10-0 run by himself. And we knew we had a superstar. And not only a superstar, we had a person who could sway the officials one way or the other by his aggressiveness, by his physicality. And, and that was unheard of besides Carl Malone in the Western Conference. He was so genuine. He'd give you the shirt off his back. A great teammate. Cared about winning more than anybody I've ever played with as far as when the game started. Hated to practice. Was the worst practice player in the world. He was the best basketball player I'd ever played with. I'm not saying he's the best basketball player ever, but the one I played with, he was the best basketball player I'd ever played with. And I would have to really think long and hard to think of any player that played an entire season that year or any other year with more determination to win than Charles Barkley. Barkley dish off to Sabamos, back to Barkley, and a nice give and go. Barkley goes in for the chain. He'd always believed in himself, but I, I think that for him to win the MVP over Michael Jordan is something that legitimized his career in a way that uh, probably more so than anything else. 
And he was that good. I mean, he was good enough to win an MVP over Michael Jordan. He was good enough to outplay probably the greatest power forward of all time, Karl Malone, uh, whenever they played against each other that year. For me, that year, we had the best player in the league. Charles was the best player, he was MVP. But above and beyond that, he was the best player in the league that year. You led your team in assists, you led them in rebounds, you led them in points, and you led them to the best record in the NBA. The fans here and around America join me in congratulating you, Charles Barclay, the 1992-93 National Basketball Association Most Valuable Player. Congratulations. He had a year for the ages. Have a front row seat to it and have my seat belt buckled up and, and go for the ride along with Charles that year. It was, it was one of the great joys of my life.